put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version, and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. A Royale Director's Cut movie review. A new law is passed in Japan, and every year a ninth grade class will have to engage in the so-called battle royale. They will all fight to the death until only one is left alive. And the film follows one such class, starting with 43 students, and yeah, you know, they're... I don't want to give too much away, but basically they're isolated in an evacuated area, it doesn't seem like they'd be able to escape. They have some food and water, and each of them has either a piece of equipment or a weapon. That and they don't know beforehand what it is. It's just it's all in you know sports bags that they picked up right before they you know the competition began. There are not a lot of. I guess you could say that there are two people who are the real lead characters of this, and yeah, I, I really don't want to give too much away, but one notable character that I do think deserves mention is there is this wild, slightly wild-haired, you know, he's still a ninth grader, and he's this utter psychopath that, you know, the others have to really, yeah, you know, it's, it's said a couple of times, he's in it for the laughs, you know. Now, the, the, the film is an action thriller drama, I would say, and there is this impeccable quality to it that I haven't seen this work in any other movie that I can really think of, but the film pretty well starts with them, you know, just before they, you know, this battle begins. And we don't know very much at all about these people. And don't worry about, you know, names and faces, because there's no way you can keep track of them. I don't know if we're actually supposed to be able to keep track of them. I don't know, because there's 43 of them. The school uniform doesn't exactly help tell them apart. Yeah, there's... anyway. We don't know a lot about them going into it, so we have a lot of these scenes where two or more people will, you know, meet, I guess you could say. At least one of them has a weapon, and they'll, you know, basically exposit about what the relation, what their relationship with the other was back when they were, you know, quote unquote, just in school. And you know, it it sets up, you know, you you understand what, yeah, what the relationship is and why they might have a motivation to either trust that other person or try to kill that other person. And this sounds like it would just really be, you know, like it would seem like really lazy screenwriting, but it just works incredibly well. You get into these tiny little glimpses of, you know, and this this little society that a class is, you know, school class is, and you just, I don't know, it, it just really works. You get a real sense of all the experiences that they had. There are also a few flashbacks to, you know, 
before the battle began. Otherwise, however, it is just this isolated one area. We don't see reactions to what's happened or what's happening from outside this isolated area. And yeah, that really is, you know, almost from start to finish in this 110 minute movie, we're pretty much limited to this, excuse me, the isolated area where, you know, it just, it, it does become a bit overpowering in a way, you know, you really do feel like they're just, at times it, it does seem really hopeless, like they, you know, and that's partly also due to the, all the killing. I mean, I mentioned before there are 43 of them. There's a lot of death in this movie. A lot. And, you know, you've got squibs going off and blood, gore, violence all over the place. It's not a very pleasant film at all. And there's like, there are times when you're sort of you know, enjoying it in that kind of way that you might enjoy bloody action. And then there are times where it's just disturbing. And the film does a really good job of sort of having, you know, both. There's actually, every six hours, you know, in the chronology of it, the guy behind it, you know, basically reads aloud the na the names and numbers that are assigned numbers as well of the you know the students who've been killed every six hours and each time right before he starts uh, you know talking they play this beautiful piece of classical music and I think without exception each time you hear that beautiful music it's a new piece each time. Someone was just gunned down or died in some horrific manner, you know, and it's just Yeah, that You know the film really gets to you and, and it really Gets in kind of you know, there are a lot of different sort of emotional Situations, you know, there's a sort of a running theme is you know the sort of there, there's like unrequited love and you know this you know, this boy is in love with this girl, but this girl is actually in love with this other boy, or you know, stuff like that. And yeah, you just you get a real sense of all these people, and that's something really impressive. Like I said, there's a lot of death in this. It something like that could really easily seem just completely detached. You know, it could. You know, I mean. A couple of dozen deaths in a single movie, and these are kids essentially. I mean, they're you know, young adults, whatever. They're they're you know, they're ninth graders. So, you know, and and with so many of them, you get this sort of sense of, you know, right before they died, they were in front of the person that they were maybe in love with or that they hated. You know, the the bully from their class, you know, and yeah, it just, it really gets to you. It's, it actually is a very emotionally engaging film. And again, that's slightly surprising with this sort of expository nature of how, you know, it, with, with a lot of it, you just, you don't really see, you know, they experienced this or that. It's just kind of, they say, oh, right, you were, you know, I was never really part of your gang, but, you know, or your, your click, whatever. It's also a very surprising film. I'd say the first half hour, you know, throughout, it's incredibly tense. But that first half hour, and that's partly why I want to, I, I really don't want to give very much away. Because that first half hour, every so often, something will happen that you just did not at all see coming. And... It just completely blows you away. And the film does this over and over and over. And, you know, you should not be spoiled. If you're watching this for the first time, don't let anybody tell you what's about to happen. You know, I don't know, punch them in the face or something. Shut them up. And just watch it because it just completely 
yeah, it it just it it just completely pulls out the carpet from underneath you. And yeah, you know, throughout the film, it keeps surprising you. There keep happening things that you didn't expect would happen. The I don't know, action, I suppose you could call it action, is ex extremely intense. It sort of goes back and forth between being quite realistic and a bit over the top, you know? It's it's a Japanese film, so they, they do the whole visual and sort of... <laughs> this is not something that would happen in real life, but it looks cool kind of thing, you know? The acting is great. Obviously, I have a little bit of trouble gauging it because I don't speak the native language of this, and I, I'd rather, you know, be in a battle royale myself than watch it dubbed. I don't even know if a dub exists, but yeah, I watch it with subtitles. But yeah, you you can really see them. You know, they they really give it their all. You know, everyone involved. It's really well paced, you know, there's constantly something going on, you know, and there are a lot of different kinds of... It, it's actually, it's an extremely packed film. There are, you know, I've, I've watched it twice now, and I, I've literally, I just watched it, and I'm already starting to sort of forget certain things, because there's just, there's so much to take in in this movie, and that's not a, that's not a bad thing, though I would say, I mean... I would definitely recommend watching it more than once because otherwise you just you have no chance of storing all of it in your mind, you know, in your in your memory. It's it's there's there's so many little you know little occurrences and little sort of you know again with these this this backstory of all these people who went and you know almost all of them went to the the went you know, we're in the same class together. And suddenly, because that's that's the interesting thing, you know, one thing is basically having people killing each other, you know, in a fight to the death, that in itself, I don't know, that, that's, that's a multiplayer deathmatch in a video game, you know, that in itself doesn't have that much interest, you know, that, that, that isn't terribly interesting in a sort of story perspective, you know, that's just, that's, it's, it's action, but it's not, you know, character and story and such, so you, you need something else, and what they, you know, what they put in is this, it's, it's partially in the choice of it being a ninth grade class, you know, that, that it is, it's these people who already knew each other, and they're just, they're, they're getting to be adults, so you have these, you know, people on on the very j just on the edge of becoming adults, and they had you know it's you know they 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 had conflicts already. They had you know, like I said, you know, love triangles and the like, and all of that stuff. When you're in school especially when you're a teenager, that stuff m means the world to you. That that seems like the most important thing ever. And suddenly that's amplified by, you know, deadly weapons. And, you know, I, I didn't even mention... They actually... Excuse me. They have a time... They... Excuse me. They, they have this... I don't know, timetable. They... I think it's like 72 hours that they, you know, the, the fight must at the most last, you know, if it, you know, if they reach that time, everyone will die, you know, it doesn't matter how many is, how many are left by that time, if they're not all dead by the, by the end of those 72, 72 hours, they're all gonna die, you know, and they have these, at, around their necks, they have these, what's it called, the, like, I don't know, neck bands, I guess, whatever, you know, strap tight to their neck, and it measures their pulse so they can see if you're dead or not, and if you tamper with it, or if you go into a dangerous zone, 
which, you know, the, the danger zones are so that, you know, they don't move too far away from each other. And, you know, as it goes, they might add more danger zones. But they do tell them, you know, so it's not like they suddenly just die. Anyway, it will set off a small explosive, large enough, of course, to kill them. It's their throat. So, yeah, you know, they have all these things, you know, threatening to kill them. It's, it's suddenly gotten a lot bigger and and it's a, a lot more visceral and vi visceral and direct with this sort of the, these conflicts and these love triangles and all of this stuff that is already going on and it's just you know and and who do you trust and who how how you know and they they explore the theme of you know some people in this situation might try to you know you know, might might refuse, and then then what do you do? You know, do you try to, you know, suggest to the others, let's you know, let's none of us fight, and just the whole, you know, how how do you react in a situation like that? You know, the the human element is one of the key elements to this film, really, that you you can really relate to so much of, and and several of the characters are kind of the types that, you know, you knew that person in your own high school setting, you know. Uh, again, I really don't want to give too much away, but, yeah, there, there's, there's at least one troublemaker, there's someone who's, like, perceived to be, you know, really easy, one of the girls, and just, yeah, the, the whole, and, and the dynamic of that, once they're in this setting, is extremely interesting. And then there's, you know, this is not just about, you know, young people killing each other. You know, is there's there's clearly symbolism and, you know, layers to it. And there are different interpretations. I personally see it as, you know, once they get out into the real world, once they graduate and have to, you know, find a job, then it is sort of an, you know, a free for all. It's it's a battle between everyone to get the best job, to make it in the real world, and and it's sort of, you know, life, adult life in a capitalist system, is in in some ways similar to, you know, nature. It's it's survival of the fittest, you know, and it has that sort of thing going for it, and you know, it it also comments some on like you know, generational stuff, generational, generational gap, you know, the relationship between adult and, I don't want to say child, but teenager, you know, and, and how much respect there might be there and such. The music, I suppose I already somewhat said, but it's fantastic. It's gorgeous music and it's very ironically used sometimes, you know. It doesn't exactly mesh with the with what we're seeing on screen. Yeah, I think that is pretty much it. I, one last thing about the, the effects vary a little bit. I will say that sometimes they aren't completely convincing. Like, you see someone maybe be shot or slashed at with a, you know, something sharp, and, like, I don't know, like, they turn around and suddenly you see the blood there on the shirt, and you can you sort of tell, yeah, that was clearly there before. You know, or they cut and then it's there. But other times it is just incredible. You know, there are a couple of shots in this, a couple of effect shots that are just mind-blowingly awesome, you know. And, yeah, I suppose, you know, if, if you need, like, any further convincing to watch this movie, after Quentin Tarantino watched this, he cast, I don't remember her name, but that little Japanese psycho chick in Kill Bill Volume 1.
And yeah, she's in this. She's not, you know, all that noticeable, perhaps. But yeah. I rest my case. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.